word is so good, so uplifting, so meaningful. And may your word become sown in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is called lots of things in the New Testament. He is the advocate, the second Adam. He is almighty, the Alpha and Omega. He is Amen, the Anointed One, the Apostle of our Confession. He is the Beloved Son. He is the Blessed and Only Sovereign. He is the Bread of Life, the Bright and Morning Star, the Chief Shepherd, Chosen of God, Christ the Lord, the Cornerstone, the Door of the Sheep, the Physician, the exalted Father. He is the firstborn from the dead, the firstborn over all creation. He is the fountain that washes away sin. He is the glory of the Lord. He is God with us. He is God our Saviour. He is the great shepherd of the sheep, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the great high priest, the Holy One of God, the I Am. He is the Nazarene, the judge of the living and the dead, the King of glory, the King of kings, the Lamb of God. He is light. He's light everlasting, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living bread, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, a man of suffering, a mediator, the mighty God the Prince of Peace, the Redeemer, the Resurrection and the Life, the Saviour, the Servant, the Son of God, the Son of Righteousness. He is called Teacher. He is the Truth, the True Vine. He is the Way. He is the Wisdom of God. He is the Wonderful Counselor. He is the Word of God. And they are just a good percentage of the names that Jesus is called in the New Testament. But you know the best name of Jesus? The best name, I think, in the New Testament? He is called a friend of sinners. And if he wasn't a friend of sinners, none of us would be here today because we're all sinners. And none of us would have received mercy. None of us would have received forgiveness. None of us would have received the promise of eternal life. None of us would have a friend in heaven. And I ask myself, why would such an exalted person, true God, eternal, the creator, take on flesh and blood and live in this broken world and be a friend of sinners? The only answer I have is love. Love. In Proverbs 17, 17, it says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. And Jesus is our friend and he is our elder brother. Love wants the very best and Jesus wants the very best for us. He wants all of us to receive eternal life and new life. It's a love that will go to death for us because he wants to deliver us from sin and death and hell. And even at our most obnoxious, at our very worst, at our most rebellious, Christ died for us. In Romans 5.8 it says, God proves his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus said, 
No one has greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And we are his friends. For Jesus was a friend of sinners. He was a friend of sinners because he sat down and ate with them. When Matthew left his office to follow Jesus, Matthew threw a party. He invited all his friends, the, the, the con men and the, the tax collectors and the sinners, and the Pharisees saw Jesus uh, having a meal with them. And they said to the, the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus overheard the Pharisees and he said to them, it's not those who are well that need a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. In the Middle East, meals are so important. Always have been. Even today. And when you sit down with another person at a meal, it shows you accept them. You class them as your friend. You are committed to them. And that's what upset the Pharisees when they saw Jesus at meal with tax collectors and sinners. A few years ago, an American diplomat uh, went to Jordan and he met with representatives of the Jordanian government and they prepared a meal for him. And the meal was the very best food they could provide. The hospitality was generous. And the American diplomat appreciated all that was done for him. And after the meal, they had, had talks at a diplomatic level. A few months after the meal, the American diplomat issued a, st a statement from Washington criticizing the Jordanian government. And the representatives of the Jordanian government was, were, were outraged. That, that's not a, a strong enough word. They were mad as a meat axe by the statement from the American diplomat. And they said, how can he do this to us? He's our friend. He sat down and broke bread with us. Jesus sat at table and he was a friend who accepted those who came and he wanted to show forgiveness and mercy towards them. And Jesus is a friend of sinners because he hears their cry. Think of your best friend. Uh, how would you describe them? Great mates? They know everything about you? All the different sides about you? Yet accept you, warts and all. Best friends available. Bring them up any time. They're approachable. Nothing is too much trouble for them. They are loyal. They laugh with you. They support you through thick and thin. And they're on your side to fight your cause. And they pray for you. Now that's a pretty good friend, isn't it? When you add all those up together. Well, if you multiply that by about a million, that's the kind of friend Jesus is friend towards us sinners. He knows us inside out, but still loves us. He knows our history. He knows our setbacks. He knows our tragedies. He knows our abuses. He knows our tears. 
He knows our failures. He knows our successes. He knows our pain. He knows our suffering. He knows our trials. He knows our temptations. He knows our deepest desires. Last week we spoke about Jesus as a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses because he has been tempted in every way like we have, yet without sin. And Jesus understands us as no other person. When we read the New Testament, we know he understood the Samaritan woman who'd been married five times and yet searching for life. He understood Matthew, the tax collector. He understood Zacchaeus and sat down and had a meal with him. He understood the thief on the cross. He understood and loved the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. He is a friend full of love and understanding, full of mercy. He sits where we sit and offers us something new and fresh that he alone can give. At the moment, there's a new film in America called The Jesus Resolu Revolution. And it's the story of the Jesus movement in the 1960s. The star of the show is Kelsey Grammer, who appears as Frazier in that series on TV. And the story centers around a church in California in the 1960s. There was a minister called Chuck Smith. And uh, he, he looked after a church, a small church, and he couldn't understand what the young people of his day were doing. They were, they were hippies. They were, they were into all sorts of things, and he, he couldn't understand them. And one day his daughter invited a street pe preacher called Lonnie Frisbee to meet her dad. And Chuck Smith sat down with Lonnie Frisbee in order to understand what hippies and all the young people were about. Well, Chuck Smith became a friend of the hippies. He became a friend of the sinners. And one young person who came to his church was a, a man, a young person, called Greg Laurie. And Greg Laurie did not know his biological father. His, Murray, his, his mother was an alcoholic and been married seven times. And Greg Laurie tried everything. And yet Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee became his friend. And Greg Laurie became a follower of Jesus. And today he is a pastor of a large church in California. And why did this happen? Is because someone became a friend of sinners who sat down with them and talked with them and not at them. Jesus is a friend of sinners because he can do something for them. Last year, a, a good friend of mine was dying from cancer in Canberra. His wife rang me up to tell me that he was going to the hospice. So I, I went up to Canberra 
and spent a couple of days with this friend of mine and his family. I prayed, I read the scriptures, I talked about old times, even though he couldn't respond verbally. But I felt so helpless. I couldn't do anything for him. I couldn't restore that weak body to a strong body which he had when he was a, a top rugby league coach. I couldn't deliver him from the pain he was going through. But Jesus, Jesus, our best friend, he is able to do mighty things for his friends. He was able to raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. He gave that newfound friend who was on the cross eternal life. He gave to the woman who was caught in the act of adultery a second chance. He gave to that woman at the well living, spiritual water for everlasting life. Jesus, as a friend of sinners, is able to offer all that we need and to give us the very best because he is a powerful friend. As a friend of sinners, he is able to forgive us, to rescue us, to restore us, to assure us, to save us to the uttermost. Jesus Christ is our best friend who loves us at all times. I think it's the most wonderful name in the New Testament. Jesus, friend of sinners. Is he your best friend too? Let us pray. O oh Lord, you love us so much. You want to offer us so much. And you always bring something new, something powerful into our lives. Something that we can't imagine. And Lord, we pray that you will give to us this morning living water. You will give to us assurance, that you will give to us mercy, that you will give to us forgiveness of sin. Thank you for being our friend. Amen.